Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Rebecca Stu and the crew. I'm Rebecca. Today we have two uh, DIYs that we're going to make. This candle holder and we will make another flower pot. So let's go over our supplies for the first craft. We're going to use these three pencil cups. They also come in wood or you could use these little wood crates. We'll need some wood slices. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. I'm in a bag of about six. We'll need some candles. I'm also going to use the gel stain that I found recently at the Dollar Tree. We'll need some paint brushes or a sponge brush, some Spanish moss. We're also going to need some craft sticks and a pencil, some different flowers of your choice. I'm going to use these paper flowers from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use some pearls, some twine, and then we'll also need a pair of scissors and some hot glue. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this gel stain. So I really like the natural color here. It's going to bring out the natural wood grain in these pencil cups. I think they're so pretty. And I didn't really want to change the color all that much. I just wanted to help bring out the beauty of the wood. So I thought the natural color would look really well. But they do sell it in a few different uh, uh, colors like a golden oak. They had golden pecan and... Um, the natural, I believe they had it in a red stain and one other color. It was a darker like walnut. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going to brush on a thin layer of the gel stain. What I really like about the gel stain is it doesn't run. So it doesn't really matter if you pick it up and hold it in your hand and uh, put the gel stain on. It's not going to run down the side and it's very low odor. You do want to wipe off the excess with a paper towel or a lint-free cloth. So then we're going to do the same thing to the wood circles. I'm just going to stain the top just to help bring out um, the color of the wood a little bit and to help clean it up. And as you can see, again, I'm going over the top of it with a paper towel to wipe off any excess uh, gel stain. You don't want too much on there. You want them to be able to dry um, fairly quickly. I did let these sit for a few hours while I did some chores. And then once they were dry, I moved along with the project, which is putting some spacers in between the cups. So the wood circles are just a tad bit uh, bigger than the wood cups, which is what I wanted. But because of that, it's hard to glue all three of the cups together. So you're going to have to put these spacers in to help um, make the cups a little bit wider so that they will stick together without pushing apart from the wood circles that we put on top. I just draw a straight line after I measure how long I need the craft sticks and then using an old pair of scissors that are sharp but definitely don't use your best pair of scissors for this you're just going to cut the top and bottom off of the craft stick to cut those to size so you're only going to need four depending on what wood circles you use if you use a lot larger one and you want the cups to uh, be able to be glued together you'd have to use a lot more of the spacers in between but since I'm just using the smaller pieces that came in the pack I only needed two for each side so we're just going to take some hot glue and glue two of the craft sticks together and then these will be glued to the sides of the cups so again in all I'm just using four of the craft sticks depending on on how large the wood circles are for the top depends on how many of these spacers you're going to need to make. So now we're just going to um, attach some hot glue to the side. Again, you want to make sure that gel stain is dried all the way or it's not going to stick. Um, and just glue your craft sticks to the side of the cup. So I did this to the one side and then we'll glue it to the other one. I guess you could glue them both just to the center cup, one on each side, but I don't know why I didn't think of it while I was doing it. I just glued them one to each cup that will be on the end. And then just turn those towards the center and then put the other cup in the middle and glue those all together. Here's what it looks like so far. Now for the wood slices, I wanted the center candle to sit just a tad bit higher. So I'm going to use two wood slices for the center and I'll just layer them with some hot glue. And then I just use the one wood circle for either side of the pencil cups. So obviously we have the pencil cups turned upside down so we can use the bottom to glue the uh, wood rounds to. So 
I have those put together and we're going to glue the Spanish moss just right down in those creases where um, you can see the spacer. So I just took some hot glue and spread it right down the center and then just pushed in the Spanish moth with moss with another craft stick. And I did layer it on the front and the back. So no matter which side you were on, you wouldn't see the spacer. So now for the candles, I just wanted to dress these up a tad bit. So I'm going to take some twine and wrap it a few times around the top of the candle. And then we'll just tie it in a knot. So as you can see, I didn't add any hot glue um, up until this point. So just wrap the twine around a few times and then tie it into a bow. And then I actually decided to go with a larger bow. So instead I just tied it in a knot and cut those excess strings off. And then I just made a very simple bow by wrapping the twine around three fingers about four times. You gather it in the center and then just tie the center off with another small piece of twine. You'll want to double knot that center piece to make sure it stays tied. And then center your bow at the top and just attach it with a small dot of hot glue. So I just started with bows at first and then I did dress these up a little bit um, later. So I did this to all three of the candles. And now we're going to start decorating the candle stands. So I have these paper flowers from Hobby Lobby, which I've had for quite a while. I bought for another project and had never got around to using them. So I found them in the drawer and decided to go ahead and start using them on this project, which I'm glad I did because they look so pretty with the wood. I love the soft green, the tan, and the pink colors all together. And then there's just a tad bit of gold. There's just these small leaves. And as you can see, I work my way back and forth between all three. I do this quite often when I'm doing crafts and I want it to be balanced. I don't start um, just on one side and work my way down. I work back and forth across um, the whole project just to make sure that we have a nice balance of flowers or leaves and things like that. That way you don't have it so heavily decorated on one side and then sparse on the other. So it kind of works in your favor to work back and forth as you go, um, you know, alternating the colors of the flowers and the sizes and then just stepping back for a minute and looking at it to see, you know, where is there an empty space? Where can I put another flower? Do I have too much of one color on one side? And just help to balance out the color scheme and the flowers and the different sizes. And you'll be much happier with your project when you're done. If you just are patient, take your time. And like I said, step back and look at it to see how it looks. Sorry, I knocked the camera <laughs> over there. As you can see, accidents happen sometimes. So we're just going to work real slow and just add some flowers all the way down. And I just continue working in this manner. Now I did not add flowers to the back. Um, I wanted the candles with the little tags to sit a certain way. So I really wasn't that worried about having flowers against the back. I did have the Spanish moss hiding those spacers in the back. So it still looks nice if you walk all the way around the candle holder but I just kind of left it blank other than that in the back. So then I found it a little bit easier to attach these paper flowers um, with a pair of tweezers. So I just attached some hot glue to the back of the flower and then I was able to slowly um, hold them in place and then attach them once I figured out where exactly I wanted each flower to go. I just kind of worked in a zigzag pattern just to make the flowers look like they kind of were starting from the top and cascading down all the way to the bottom. The flowers, uh, once I got to the bottom, they actually had these small gold pearls that it came with. So I thought those were really pretty to add in with the flowers. And then once those were in, I thought that an off-white pearl that I had from Dollar Tree would look nice if I put a few of those down around the flowers. So I ended up attaching a few of those, again, just using hot glue and adding just a few throughout the different flowers. And you'll see here in a second um, what those look like. But I just kept working with the flowers all the way to the bottom. And then again, I just added the pearls once I was done um, into the bottom, just because I thought it helped add that little tiny bit of something special. So you can see the pearls here, the gold and the off-white. And then for the candles themselves, I added a little bit of the small flowers and pearls to the bows just to help decorate them just a little bit. 
So this is a really easy craft project. You're really just gluing things together after you stain it. It's really not a lot of work. Even the bows around the candles are really easy to make. So let's go over our supplies for our second project. We're going to use one of these wood pieces again, some paint brushes. We'll need some paint or painter's tape of different sizes, some Rust-Oleum uh, stain, or you can just use paint. I'm going to use a couple different colors of paint, some faux leather from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use one of these rotary cutters. You could use scissors, a ruler. We're also going to be using some um, hot glue and we'll use brads. Those are those little gold paper punches and some greenery of your choice. So first thing we're going to do is just take painter's tape. I didn't have any, so I'm actually using old washi tape that I had left over from Halloween. I probably bought this like two years ago. It came in a pack of 10. I think I got them for like 40 cents on clearance at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to use this as my painter's tape. It was actually the perfect size. Um, which was nice. I didn't have to cut down painter's tape. I just really just stuck it on as a like weird pattern all the way around kind of geometric shape. I didn't really have a plan in place when I started. I just kind of started taping it, which is kind of fun. You can kind of just play with the design. I knew I was going to use a few different colors of paint and then I just started painting and staining it. So when you're using any kind of painter's tape or washi tape, whatever kind of tape you're using, you do want to be mindful when you're painting it to paint away from the tape so that you're not shoving the um, paint underneath of the tape just in case there's a part of it that didn't stick down as well as you had planned. So I just put a small section of paint on all the different sides. So I started working kind of in a pattern. So one side I would do the smaller triangle in blue and then the next side I would do the larger triangle in blue. And I did the same thing with the gel stain. I used a white paint gold and rose gold. I just kept moving the tape and changing different patterns. I'd wait for the paint to dry and then once it was dry after a few minutes I could peel off the tape and move uh, tape on top of what I just painted to cover it up um, and make a nice crisp line when I painted the other section. So this paint dries actually really fast on the wood pieces. It's just the acrylic paint from Walmart and it actually dries really quickly. You could even use a hair dryer if you like to help speed up the process. I didn't find it was necessary. By the time I had um, put about two colors on, it was dry enough that I could remove the paint and then, or the tape, and then move the tape around to help uh, create the different pattern. So I just peeled off the tape. As you can see, it left a really nice straight lines with just using that washi tape. So if you're ever in a pinch and don't have any masking tape or painter's tape, I highly recommend using it. I think it worked really, really well. So here we have it all painted. I did add a little bit of rose gold up at the top. Now we're going to make the handles. So we're using this faux leather from Dollar Tree. We're just measuring out about a half an inch strip, uh, strip here on the side and cutting it with the rotary cutter. You can just use scissors if you like. And then I just cut that piece in half. And these will be our handles for either side of the box. We're also going to use these metal brads, but we're going to cut the um, prongs off so it looks like a metal nail that's left behind. So again, don't use your best pair of scissors to cut through wood or metal. Use an older pair or just a cheap pair because you don't want to ruin your good scissors. Um, we're just going to cut the ends off here and we'll do that to four of the brads. Don't mind my hands, I have paint and gel stain all over them. So as you can see, um, I just cut the corner of the handles here into a triangle. Add a little bit of hot glue on each side and you're just going to attach one side at a time to create these faux leather handles on each side of the box. And then for the brads, we're going to attach those with just a small dot of hot glue to make it look like you have this little nail holding on the leather handles to either side of the box. They're a little tricky to get on, so if you have tweezers, that might help. This is what it looks like on both sides, the little handles and the different painted pattern. I did stain the inside of the box, though it wasn't necessary. Then I just filled it with some greenery that I had from the Dollar Tree. Then I found this little wooden tag that I had um, left over from an old project. I actually just glued two little leaves to the back, and I painted the word grow 
on the front with um, a paint marker and just some white paint. And then I just attach this little sign to the front of the box. This is optional. You don't have to do this part. I just thought it looked cute on the front. And that's it. If you wanted to, you could put this on like a candle holder to make it like a taller standing one. You could actually um, layer the boxes and make it a nice tall piece if you wanted to. There's lots of different options. But I hope you guys like today's craft ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great night, everyone.